please, I don't think I need remind you of the final examination tomorrow. And a diploma from the Woodruff School guarantees a well-paying position. Most of you needn't worry. But if I were a certain young lady in this class, I'd go home right now and start studying very, very hard. Unless she's prepared to pay another year's tuition. Class dismissed. Good night, Mrs. Grant. Good night, my dear. <coughs> good night, Judge. Oh, good night, Ralph. Good night. <coughs> good night, Ellen. Good night, Ralph. I had a lovely time. Oh, Ralph, are you leaving? Leaving? <laughs> Don't be silly. I haven't even been here yet. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but I have to graduate tomorrow. Hmm. That is, maybe I do. Yes, well, I uh, hope you do. As soon as you graduate, you can forget all this stuff. I'll see you at the door, Ralphie. Good night. Good night. Good night. Now, really, Ellen, that's no way to treat a boyfriend. I just don't understand all this fuss about becoming a secretary. Well, I just got to get a job. I can't go on living off you and Uncle Ben forever. Besides, becoming a secretary may be the first rung on the ladder. Here, there's no telling where it might lead. Why, the President of the United States started in a haberdashery. Do you think he's any better off now? Not that your uncle and I are trying to get rid of you, dear. You know that we're not. But did you ever hear about girls getting married? Well, if I don't get a job, maybe I will marry him. <laughs> Good night, dear. Good night, Aunt May. Of course, Ralph's well, not the kind of a boy that a girl dreams about, but after all, he is assistant district attorney and he can provide you with a home, security, and children. Uh, that's more than a typewriter can do. Yeah, I suppose so. Attention, ladies. This is Mr. Richmond of the Richmond Realty Company, who is here to hire a new secretary. I invited him to look over the entire class. It goes without saying that your work will be the deciding factor. So to the victor belong the spoils. <laughs> uh, the first test will be a straight business letter. Uh, take my dictation, please. Notebooks, pencils, ready, go. P. Winston Franklin, Midwestern Grain Company, Allenville, Idaho. Dear sir, as per our telephone conversation of June 4th, we are expecting by express prepaid 40 bushels of wheat at your earliest convenience. It is agreed that the price of said wheat shall be the closing quotation of wheat... What did he say? ...on the Chicago exchange of that date. Thanking you in advance for your prompt attention to this order, I remain sincerely yours, Consolidated Products Company by Jasper T. Witherspoon, Purchasing Agent. Now, ladies, you have exactly 45 seconds to transcribe your notes. I want three copies, please. Are we ready? Go.
Miss Grant. Miss Grant! I'll pick up the papers for your personal inspection, Mr. Richmond. Decided on anyone? Yes, that girl. Have her report right away. Splendid, splendid. Which girl? That girl. But that's Miss Grant. Well, Richmond takes Miss Grant. just what you're going to tell me, Mr. Woodruff. You, you don't think I'll ever become a secretary. So I guess I'll have to become a wife. You don't understand, Miss Grant. You've just been hired. Hired? I can't believe it. Neither can I. Try not to disgrace the Woodruff school too much. Hmm? Oh, don't worry, Mr. Woodruff. I tied up my last nickel in becoming a secretary. I'll make good if it kills me. I'll send flowers. Huh? We'll take anything. We've got to find a place to live. My husband's a vet. We're due some consideration. We've been living in a garage. Please, folks. I told you I'd give you a call if an apartment comes up. Well, you, you got my number there. I know you. Now, no, wait a minute, folks. I got all your names on file. You've got to help me. The doctor says my wife's going to have triplets. And you and me to help you. I told you we haven't... Repeat that. You've got an apartment for rent. Two bedrooms and bath. Kitchen, dining room, breakfast nook, 720 Donegal Avenue. Wait a minute, I take that down. 720 Donegal Avenue. Yeah, well, thank you very much. You've got the wrong number. Well, I don't think I'll ever become a secretary. Well, I'll tell you what, Mrs. Woodruff. Thank you very much. You've got the wrong number. I'm the new secretary. Oh, yeah? Mr. Richmond just hired me. Please step this way. Oh, pardon me. Yeah. Mr. Richmond, your new secretary is here. We'll see what she needs in the way of equipment. Looks like she's got all the equipment she needs. Hello. Hello, Miss Grant. Sit down. Thank you. I uh, suppose you're wondering why I picked you. Well, frankly, I like your looks. This job calls for personality and nice appearance. More of a receptionist than a stenographer. Oh, that's good. But whom do I receive? People who merely come in looking for home and apartment listings. Oh. I'm far too busy myself, so all you have to do is sit out there and listen to their troubles. Just sit there? That's all. Uh, you think you can do it? Oh, yes, sir. I'm sure I can do that, Mr. Richmond. Well, fine. I'd, uh, now, I want you to meet my staff. This is Mr. Gleason. Yes. Likewise. Miss Grant, this is Mr. Kilcoin, our statistician. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? These gentlemen and I are at work on an important project of uh, promotional type, taking up all our time. Now, there's uh, one important thing. That room is our conference room, and we're never to be disturbed. No one aside from Mr. Gleason, Mr. Kilcoin, and myself is permitted to enter. And that goes for you, too. Is that clear, Miss Grant? Yes, yes, perfectly clear. Hmm? All right, fine. You can go to work now. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'll try very hard to please you, Mr. Richmond. Oh. I'll try awfully hard. Oh, I'm very pleased to have met you, gentlemen. And I won't forget what you told me about that room, Mr. Richmond. And what is that? That's just what I was after. See nothing, hear nothing, and know nothing. Hello? Yeah, Herb. 200 to win Morningstar, 8th at Pimlico. You're on. Hello. Yeah, Jack. Battle Station, Belmont and the 7 right, got it. Hello? 
Now it's too late for run down. What we need around here like an epidemic is a dame. She's perfect. Nice eyes, nice hair, and nothing under it. All I can see, it's another mouth to keep padlocked. How can she talk? She won't see anything. And if she did see anything, she wouldn't understand it. And if she understood it, who'd believe a dame like that? It's a perfect setup. We got beauty in the front office and brains in the back office. Now relax. Let's see how we're doing. Start figuring. 226, 51, 51, 90, 83, 30, 57, 106, 20, 68, 47, 70, less 135, 50, 56, 10. $509.30. Want me to check it with the ad machine? That's an insult. At the bank, I used to check the adding machine. The way you juggle figures, I wonder how that bank ever spotted that money that you uh, borrowed. It was a dame that gave me away. Well, you guys forget about this dame. She was the dumbest one in the whole school. So is my wife, but I'm still paying her alimony. Look, fellas, just leave things to me. We'll never get caught. That's what the fish said when he took the hook. Order in the court. Were you served with an eviction notice? Served with it? Our kind-hearted landlord nailed it on the door. We've lived there for eight years, Your Honor. He can't just throw us out. Your Honor, I'm completely within my rights. I'm afraid he is. Eviction granted. Next case. Johnson versus Charles and Jeannie Mars. Well, you're having a busy day today, Mr. Johnson. I'm sorry, but these tenants have to vacate to make room for an apartment house I'm building. It's going to be fine, big, and, and modern. And expensive. Why don't you make this rent gouge or build some low-cost housing where people can live without pawning your children for the rent? Your Honor, the law is perfectly clear in these matters. The law is clear in these matters. Eviction granted. That's terrible. Order in the court. I'm sorry, Your Honor. One hour recess. Oh, oh, I don't have to hear him. Him. I'm so sorry. Well, you heard your uncle. And he's going to hear from me. Young lady, I'll see you in my chambers. Pardon. Young lady, if I weren't so hungry, I'd find you for contempt. Contempt is just what I feel about those poor people being kicked out of their homes. Listen, the housing situation in this town is no more my business than it is yours. Well, it so happens that it is my business. Huh? And when the right moment presents itself, don't think I'm not going to talk about it to my boss. Your boss? What have you done? Bribe somebody or something? Who is he? Mr. Richard Richmond of the Richmond Realty Company. Huh? And all I have to do is sit and wait for people to come in and discuss their housing problems. You mean, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> you mean uh, people are going to discuss uh, their problems uh, with you? Exactly. Well, I can see a lot more new business coming into my court. <laughs> Meatloaf again. <laughs> What are all the flags for? I don't know. Maybe somebody picked a winner. So maybe that Daniel hired had a brainstorm. How can you have a brainstorm when you haven't got a brain? Let's see what gives. Grant, where did all those signs come from? Mr. Richmond, you don't realize how many people are looking for cheap places to live. Well, I appreciate your efforts, but there's no sense in wearing yourself out. Oh, I like to keep busy, and, well, there doesn't seem to be much to do around here. Uh, oh, uh, well, there, there's going to be. As a matter of fact, Mr. Gleason has several letters to dictate right now. I have? Yeah, yeah, you remember. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, they can wait. You can't run an office efficiently by letting things pile up, Mr. Gleason. That was one of the first things they taught us at school. Miss Grant's absolutely right. You'd better get going, Mr. Gleason. Yes, Mr. Bitchman. Pardon me. Oh. Everything okay? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Where was I? Dear sir. Oh, yeah. Excuse me, be right back. Hey, I can't take of nothing to dictate. Here, answer this circular. Well, what do I say? Say anything. Tell them we'll buy the property. Why? What would? What difference does it make, as long as we don't mail a letter? Okay, Mr. Richmond. You are the boss, Mr. Richmond. Uh, what was I? Dear sir, excuse me a minute. I'll be right back. Oh, well, forget that. Take a letter. To the, uh, Vincent Land and Development Company. 1254 Ozone Avenue. Uh, gentlemen. Uh, am I going too fast No, sir. I'm not very good at shorthand, but when I get stuck, I just use a doofer. Use a what? A doofer. See, when I can't remember the right sign, I make something else do for it. Oh, yeah. Doofer, doofer it. <laughs> oh, that's real genius. Thank you. Yeah. In regard to your offer to sell 20 choice acres of Vincent Knowles' estate for $60,000, I would like to say that we thought the whole thing over and decided to accept your offer. Why don't you? We don't know what? Accept their offer. I just did. No, you said I'd like to. Oh. Well, what could I accept? All right. Money will follow shortly. Yours truly, Timothy P. Gleason, Vice President. You know, I know that Vincent Knowles section very well, Mr. Gleason. It's a wonderful location for a housing project. Just what we had in mind. A low-cost housing project? Chronically speaking, no cost at all. Well-planned and, and compact? It is so compact that it it's, uh, well, it's going to be called a Richmond Dream House, it's all... I get eight on the two. You're pretty good. Take it around no place, see? Still carry a grudge against the English language, don't you? Mmm. Dick's around here somewhere. I don't carry no... Who is she? She acts like she owns the place. Might be any time now. The surroundings seem a bit dowdy for a man of your talents and a girl of my taste, Mr. Richmond. Just three rooms and a scratch sheet, but we call it home. Of course, it doesn't compare to the business your husband left you, Mrs. Donato. Left it to you rather suddenly, didn't he? Hmm. A scotch here is second rate, too. You've changed, Peggy. You used to get to the point a lot faster. All right. At the risk of sounding old-fashioned, why don't you let me take you out of all this? Back into your organization. Back into the big time, back to a big city. I like it down here with the smaller betters. Got a long lifeline, want to keep it that way. No one gets hurt when I'm on their side. Think it over. You can run the entire syndicate for me. No thanks, I've got all I can handle here. Meaning, no doubt, little Miss Wide Eyes in the front office? That's strictly business. Like it was with us, Dick? Like it should have been with us. Well, this was a wasted morning. Could have had my nails done. Your nails are doing all right, Peggy. <laughs> Goodbye, my sweet. Goodbye. The lifeline looks a bit shorter to me now. Relax, dear. You're not fooling anyone. What's the matter with her? Oh, that's a saddy woman. Here's a letter on the 
Vincent Knowles' property. If you'll sign it, I'll send it off. Just a minute. Let me take a look at it. Sixty thousand? Did you offer sixty thousand? Well, it was a nice round figure, the roundest figure I could think of. Well, it's not worth that much. Oh, it's a very good piece of property, Mr. Richmond. Just about the only place in town you could build a real housing project. Well, who wants a housing project? Outside of me. You know, like we talked about? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, 55000 is the most I pay, and I know they won't accept that, so we might as well forget about it. But, Mr. Richmond... That's all, Miss Grant. Yes, sir. And you can go to lunch, Miss Grant. Yes, sir. on Sir Tom. Yes, sir. You got a bet. Hey, the whole place out there was crawling with house hunters. They take me run on a scratch sheet for rentals. Isn't that dame back from lunch yet? No, 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 no. Mr. Richmond. Maybe she's out eating brain food. She's been gone two and a half hours. Well, ain't she ain't eating brain food. She couldn't eat that much on what we're paying her. Look, you better watch the front. We don't want any strangers busting in here. The first stranger I'd like to brush off is Kid Doofer. Kid who? Doofer. You give her a word she can't spell, it comes back Doofer. Oh. Have you got something in the court? Court? I ain't interested in courts. Well, do you have anything about $8,000? Well, yeah, it's what they want from me, though. Oh, that's too far. Now, look, folks, I told you time and again we ain't got nothing to rent, not even a phone booth. But Ellen Collins said you might have something very soon. Well, if we do a day, she's got to build it herself. I think she intends to. Yeah, you, what? You, you, you. Uh oh, look, why don't you all get on the street? That other fellow. Uh -oh. He's got a lot of rentals down there, I know. Uh -oh. I feel the like second oh, time I've been here. Yeah. Yeah. Call you back. Hey, she's here with a couple of suspicious-looking characters. What do they look like? You know, keep our fair city clean type boys. Ah, uh, you worry too much. With a dame like that, you can't worry too much. Okay, stash the phone. Right. Oh, hello, Mr. Richmond. We were just out to the property. Property? Vincent Knowles, and guess what? What? You don't have to pay 55000 You can have the property for fifty. I can. Yes, Mr. Hopkins here is a sales agent, and I offered him that figure, and he accepted it. Miss Grant drives a hard bargain, Mr. Richmond, but I brought all necessary papers. Well, now, just a minute. I don't get this. Miss Grant's merely my secretary. She has no authority to go around making deals for me. But, Mr. Richmond, I... I thought you said if you could get it for 55000 Never mind what I said. I've got a half a mind to... Anything wrong? Oh, Will excuse I... me. Mr. Richmond, Mr. Ralph Winton. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? I was uh, just looking around for your license. I didn't notice it in the front office either. Oh, that reminds me. I, I guess I should hang it up, but I didn't think it'd go with the wallpaper. Well, you know, the law requires that your license be displayed very prominently. See, city ordinance number uh, 14,563, section B. <laughs> Ralph likes to remind people that he's the new assistant district attorney. <laughs> assistant district attorney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that, that must be interesting work. Very? Much more interesting than mine. <laughs> well, uh, let's sit down. No. You sit right here, Mr. Hopkins. Thank you. Now, uh, what were we talking about? The property. Property. Oh, yes. Fine piece of property. Couldn't find anything better for the price. And all we require is $5,000 down payment to get it into escrow. Mr. Hopkins says that escrow usually takes about three weeks, but I talked him into squeezing it through in one. Uh, that's nice squeezing. Well, shall we settle a deal on those terms? Well, there are a couple of questions I'd like to ask first. Uh, about, uh... About what? About, uh... Zoning. Yes, yeah, zoning. Oh, there's a few restrictions, but that shouldn't bother you. I'm sure my uncle can straighten them out. Oh, I told him about the project on the way to the Knowles, and he's very much interested in it. And Mr. Richmond, he wants to meet you personally. Your uncle? Judge Grant. Judge Grant. <laughs> A real operator wouldn't delay a minute on a deal at this time, Mr. Richmond. Well, I don't think he would either, not if he's going to save himself $5,000. <laughs> well, who's delaying? Oh. Miss Grant, there, there must be some way I can reward you for this wonderful achievement. Oh, Mr. Richmond, the only reward I want is the privilege of doing more. That's what I thought. Bye. Uh -huh. 
Pete, you gotta fire this dish. All right, but at the rate she's going, she's costing us $2,500 a day. That's $104 an hour, $1.75 a minute, and two and nine ten cents a second. And Lightning's figures never lie. That speech just cost us an extra five and seven ten cents. Okay, fire her. Now you're talking. Fire her. Uh, wait a minute. Who's the boss around here? Whose idea was it to hire a dame with a DA boyfriend and a judge uncle? If she's got a brother, he's a warden. Okay, I'll handle it. Wait a minute, we can't make her suspicious. What am I going to tell her? We're firing her because she saved us 5,000 bucks? That doesn't make sense. And us on them 20 acres... Us on them 20 acres of land? That makes sense. Suppose somebody hits a three-horse parley. What are we going to pay him off in? Dirt? I got it. We'll make her quit. You'll have to kill her. That's the idea. Overwork. We'll pile it on her. Eight, ten, sixteen hours at a stretch. Nothing but work, work, work. And in three days, you know what'll happen? We'll own a hundred thousand acres. While we're not prepared at this moment to give you full particulars regarding this housing project, we can assure you it's a modern development with the most up-to-date conveniences and improvements and well within the price range of the average wage earner of this community. We therefore wish to advise you to make no commitments regarding your housing situation until you've heard from us, which should be in the very near future. Further inquiries will be unnecessary, as we shall furnish you with full data at our very earliest convenience. The Richmond Realty Company desires nothing more than the privilege of assisting you in making a sound investment and finding a good, comfortable home. Yours for bigger and better housing, we remain the Richmond Realty Company, Dick Richmond, President. Got it? No, sir. What? I missed a little. Starting from where? Where did you start? You get the general drift. Just throw in a few doofers and fill it out in your own words. Yes, sir. Now, look, Miss Grant, you know the people in this town. I want you to get a telephone book and pick out three or four hundred of the likeliest prospects and send them each a copy. Yes, sir. Oh, I'll have the letter mimeographed. Oh, no, no, I think we ought to type it. We uh, do want to be a little more personal, don't we? Do we? Of course. And, Miss Grant, I want you to check all the doctors, lawyers, dentists, and professional men and make a special file on them. Yes, sir. Better make a special file on the businessmen, workers, and civil servants, too. Yes, sir. And, Miss Grant. Yes, sir. Make a file on the file. File on the files. Yes, sir. And I'll need it all in a couple of days. A couple of days? Well, if you have it done sooner, that's all right, too. Yes, sir. Oh. I'm going to have to steam my mouth open in the morning. If I don't get some rest pretty soon, I won't be able to lift my gavel. Got to keep going, Judge. After all, this project may mean homes for us. Well, I don't know anything about projects, but I know that this job is too strenuous for you, Ellen, and you ought to quit. Quit? With all this work to be done, why, they'd never forgive me. Well, there's no sign of life. I just hope she's got enough strength to say I quit. Good morning. All done. She thought I'd given her some laundry to do, too. It was a big job. The postage alone came to $83. Miss Grant, I, uh, I don't know how we'll ever be able to thank you, but we'll find a way. Oh, that's all right. A uh, conference room, gentlemen. We'll need a crowbar to pry her loose. I'll just keep piling on the work. Oh, it ain't any use. If I loved horse racing like that dame loves work, I'd be a horse. Maybe we're being too nice to her. Lightning, I think you got something there. I'll go win and bother. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There are things that girls like her resent much more than bawling out. It's all yours, Mr. Richmond. In regard to our telephone conversation of the 10th, 
to wit that you would like to include me in your proposition. I would like to say uh, here and now... I'd uh, like to say here and now that as far as the Richmond Realty Company is concerned, the deal is off. It's not a question of money. A hundred thousand less mortgage and interest seems like a very reasonable figure. Very reasonable figure. However, considering the market, plus the zoning laws involved, we have decided that this is not a good time to enter into a venture of this size. Regards to the board of directors, doofer, 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 we remain the Richmond Realty Company, the Richmond president. Miss Grant. Wasn't that all? Not quite. Miss Grant, you've been doing a swell job. Oh, thank you. And I have a special way of rewarding efficient secretaries. Do you? Uh-huh. Well, he's kissing her off. Mr. Richmond, you shouldn't have done that. But I'm glad you did. How many secretaries have you had? Oh, dozens. Mr. Richmond, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. They all said that. You know what I'd do then? What? Did he get rid of her? Rid of her? He ain't even come up for air. Oh, Dick. Did you do that to all your secretaries? No. Some of them were men. Mr. Richmond, I'm not used to this kind of treatment. Oh, that'll come with experience. I've had all of the experience I want. Relax, baby. A new track record. Either that or they died standing up. Here. You're not quitting. I have news for you, Mr. Richmond. You are in the market for a new secretary. Young, pretty, and delinquent. to talk to you about the housing project. Yeah, we're in, aren't we? I don't know. I'm out. Oh, no! Well, we've been talking to the Shaws and the Coopers and the Millers and dozens of others, and they all want to get in on it. Well, I, I just didn't have enough experience along certain lines. Oh, Pop goes a beautiful daydream. Well, you can still talk to Mr. Richmond about it. Oh, no. If you quit, you must have discovered some funny business going on in there. It wasn't so funny. People get burned trusting guys they don't know. They take your money and nothing happens. We heard you and Judge Grant were interested in it. We figured it would have to be on the level. On with the search. Oh, I'm sure you can find something. Oh, we can find a lot of things. All they want your eye teeth. Are you serious about all this depending on me? Oh, when you have as little money as we have, Ellen, you've got to be sure it's safe. That's right. Then I'm in. Driver, stop the bus. Lady, if you're going back to do something about this low-cost housing, I'll take you back personally. Thank you. Well, with that 5000 gone, the bank balance should read exactly $1,266.85. 95 cents. Oh, I'm sorry. Every time I think about that bubble-headed day... Okay, okay, I made a mistake. She's gone now, and we'll have our heads above water again. We'll go down for the third time.
Miss Grant, you didn't have to finish the day out. I'm not finishing anything, Mr. Richmond. I'm staying. I'm seeing the housing project through to completion. But... Now, here is a list of just some of the people who are desirous of purchasing homes. I've arranged for them to meet you and go over the details tomorrow. But you were right in quitting after the way I acted. And you never can tell when you get the gleam again? I wouldn't advise it. But you're a pretty girl. I'm able to get the urge and make a pass at you. Even him? Yeah, even me. Let us understand each other, gentlemen. Any further display of passion, and I will have my uncle, the judge, install a policeman at my desk. Gentlemen, the conference room. not in there. You know, I think Little Miss Fix It fixed it so we can get our money back. Oh, sure. With interest. Those jokers of hers are coming over tomorrow with down payments and we'll unload this quaint little vista. What do you mean? She got us into it, she can get us out of it. You don't want to trim a lot of poor yokels out of their life savings, do you? Oh, Mr. Kilcoin, now don't be so crude. That's the way it smells. Look, it smells nice and legal. We're in the real estate business. They put up the dough, and we give him each a lot in his own name. Our commission is five grand. Now, that's legitimate, isn't it? Sure. But they expect houses to be built here. Can we help it if we suffer reverses and can't finish the project? That's business. Yeah, and we're giving it to them. Plenty. Richmond Realty Company. Oh, Mrs. Donato. No, Mr. Richmond never gets in this early. I should have known. He always did like to spend his mornings in bed. Mr. Richmond is out looking over some of his investments. Well, take a message for him, will you? You'd better write it down. You do write, don't you? Any word you can pronounce, I can write, Mrs. Donato. Tell Mr. Richmond I have 5,000 to invest on the Flywell property at Belmont. 5,000 Flywell property, Belmont. I have it. Congratulations. I knew you'd make it. I had such a wonderful comeback. Hello. Oh, hello, Uncle Ben. Yes, Mr. Richmond said that he could meet with all of you at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Yes, I'll see you then. Goodbye. Mr. Richmond, this is my uncle, Judge Ben Grant. How do you do? Mr. Right. Willicombe, our architect. Hello. How do you do? Councilman Reed. How do you do, Councilman? And these are just some of the people who are interested in our houses. This is Mr. Dick Richmond, president of the Richmond Realty Company, and Mr. Gleason, our vice president. I'm sure. You have excellent taste, Mr. Richmond. That's one of my favorites. Do you mind if I straighten it? Oh, no, 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 I'll straighten it. Oh. Well, shall we sit down? I'm afraid it's going to be a little crowded. Well, uh, why don't we use the front office? Oh, no, Mr. Richmond, no privacy in there. How about the conference room? The what? Uh, in there. Oh, no, 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 we got a lot of important business going on in there. Yeah, I see. Well, uh, there's nothing more important than the housing project. Yeah, well, uh, you better give Mr. Gleason a chance to tidy up in there. Yeah, we're cleaning it up, but it's still kind of dusty, so if you'll excuse me, duck everything. A pinch? Worse. <laughs> We'll call you back. Oh, I'm sure the folks don't mind the little mess. This way, please. Wait a minute, Miss Grant. Oh, Mr. Gleason, it's ridiculous for us to wait while you tidy up a bit. There's something my mama drilled into me. Yeah, me too. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Kilcoyne. He's our, uh, well, he's a vice president, too. Well, how do you do? Oh, how do you do? How do you... Uh, Mr. Willicombe, right here, please. Thank Councilman you. Reed, will you sit over there, please? Thank Come on, you. everybody. Come on in. Just go right around in here. Just make yourselves comfortable. Hope you don't mind standing. That's right. Well, I guess now we can start the meeting. Mr. Richmond, Uncle Ben has offered to help us with our legal problems. Oh, well, thank you, Judge. Uh, we were hoping there wouldn't be any. Very interested in your project, Mr. Richmond. Not as an investor, of course. No, no, not as an investor. 
Investor. Oh, Mr. Richmond, that reminds me. Mrs. Donato called this morning and Ms. said... Miss Grant, would you mind th stepping out in the other office? <laughs> Excuse us. Sir. You're not having another one of your attacks, are no, you? No, no, no. What did Mrs. Donato want? Oh, Mrs. Donato. Uh, she said she wanted to invest 5000 on the Flywell property at Belmont. Yeah, well, that's uh, one of our largest lots. Uh, we got a lot of property in Belmont, and uh, Mrs. Donato's been dabbling quite a bit. Yeah, well, I'm sure she's quite a dabbler. Uh, you get back in there. I'll be in a minute. With the thousand off on solidarity, we're just about balanced. But it's a good thing you dumped that five G's in Dick's lap. I don't like the looks of this race. As they say in my set, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Yeah? I gotta remember never to bet in Denmark. Hello. Just a minute. Dick, are you in? I'm always in for Dick. Hello, Lammy. How are things on your side of the railroad tracks? That's what I'm trying to find out. What's all this about 5G's on Flywell? It's a wager, Dick. You weren't in, so I placed it with your office. Thought you'd appreciate my throwing some business your way. You know I can't take a $5,000 bet. I'm not in your league. Well, then lay it off. Someone placed it with me, and I'm laying it off with you. Anything wrong with that? Only this. I'm not taking the bet. Don't do anything rash, Dickie boy. I placed that bet five hours ago. It isn't good business ethics to call up a half an hour before the race and say you weren't playing for keeps. If I win, I want my marbles. Oh, what gives? Check the odds on Flywell quick. We get a 5G bet and we gotta lay it off. 5G? This is the phone in the front office. Please, Mr. Richmond, they're waiting for you. Get going. Miss Grant, I appreciate your giving me an important message five hours after you received it. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Richmond, but I didn't think anything for Mrs. Donato could be too important. I was just telling Councilman Reed that what interests me the most in this project is that you're breaking the stranglehold that Johnson has on building in this town. Once you get one of these low-cost uh, housing projects over, you can follow up with more. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure, yes. Well, uh, Mr. Think... Richmond, uh, now about that Belmont deal, uh, it's ten to one that uh, there's something going on down there. Yeah, it certainly looks that way. Well, uh, I don't like that proposition. Unload it. Yes, sir. I'll unload as much as I can. You better help him, Mr. Kilcoyne. Yes, sir. Hello. Oh, yeah. Oh, hello, Mr. Dug Dugan. Um... Yeah, that's a very fine choice. I'll put it right down in a ledger. Of course I'm all right. I was Mr. Dugan. He wants a place in the second lot, uh, Pimlico Street. That's over on the west side. Uh, how big a place does he want? 200 by 200. We may have to subdivide that one, too. Yeah, well, if you'll excuse us, uh, we'll go and uh, subdivide. Hello, Mike. Kelcoin here. Say, we... Nothing, Mike. Nothing at all. I'll call you back. We're looking for something inexpensive. Who oh, ain't? Hey, wait a minute. Where are we going to call from? We haven't got much time. Well, look, you go to the coffee shop and I'll use the drugstore. That dame certainly made life pleasant around here. Pleasant's like living in a mixed mess. And for every thousand dollar advance, I'll turn over immediately a deed to one fiftieth of the land. If that meets with your approval, Judge. Oh, it certainly does, yes. Yeah. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Hello? Price on what? Well, it's, uh, uh, I haven't got it with me. Look, you heard me. I'll get it, Miss Grant. Hello. They just won't let me do any work around here. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're on. Quickest deal I ever made. Mr. Richmond, the next phone that rings, you're just going to have to let me take a message. I have to prove that I'm of some use around here. Uh, well, Miss Grant, if you want to show how useful you are around here, why don't you run out and get us some nice cold drinks? Cokes or something. It's getting warm here and may get warmer. Yes, it certainly is. I believe I can stand a nice cold drink. That's a good idea. Well, if you're sure that you can manage without me. Oh, we'll try. Uh, okay, I'll be back in a jiffy. Don't rush. I'll hurry. Now, Mr. Richmond, I take it we agree on the general blueprint? Oh, definitely. Oh, can I help you? 
You sure can. You're just about our last hope. Is there really any point in waiting? Indeed there is. Now, don't any of you leave this room until I get back. Just sit down. Pardon me? All that rent against purchase uh, price plans. You know, pardon me, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Richmond, uh, concerning that Belmont deal, we just can't get rid of that 5,000 acres. Why not? Well, it seems there's a little smell from the West. Nobody wants to touch it. Oh, well, did you try the uh, Chicago Real Estate Syndicate? Oh, well, I can smell it clear out there. They don't want any part of it. Nobody does. Mr. Richmond, couldn't that wait till after the meeting? Oh, no, no, no. It's very important. Can't wait at all. Uh, try Fenton Miller, some of the others. We only got 15 minutes. Yes, Mr. Richmond. Well, not rent against cost question. Uh, I don't want to quibble. Anything you say. Well, splendid. Splendid. You see, Mr. Richmond isn't interested only in money. He wants to do some good. Uh, don't you, Mr. Richmond? Oh, that's right. I sure do. Well, that's fine. Now, on that matter of landscaping, I'd say we need about 15 feet of parkway for every tree. Exactly. Well, I don't know. It depends upon the tree. Some roots grow up to the surface and break the paving. They do? I think he's got you there. No, I would recommend that you wait until you Mr. get to... Mr. Richmond, Fenton, Miller, Corbini, and Schultz say no soap, uh, dice, a deal. Well, 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 keep trying. Look, the phone service is awful slow, and we only got 15 minutes until our exclusive contract runs out. Use the phone in the front office. Due to your secretary, the phone in the front office is temporarily out of order. Well, find another one. Hop to it. Yes, sir. Uh, try Jablo in Las Vegas. Jablo in Las Vegas, right. I'll take a message for you. No, no, no. Hello. Just a bundle of energy. <laughs> what? No, thanks. Better luck next time. Jablo from Las Vegas wants to sell us 5,000 acres. <laughs> well, I guess the wind has reached Las Vegas. How about John Harrigan, Los Angeles? That's a good idea. Richmond Realty never gives up. You can't carry all of these, Ellen. No, I guess you're right. I better get someone from the office to help me. Gonna do? Well, you can't be in there all day. We haven't got much time. Come on. Give me a couple of nickels, will you, Bill? Be with you in a minute, Alan. Long distance. I want Los Angeles, Trinity, one, eight, six, two, five. And hurry, will you? Hurry up, hurry up. Deposit $1.50, please. Hello, Harrigan. This is Gleason. Thanks. Stop! Hang on, Harrigan! Hey, will you take five G's and fly well at Belmont? Well, hurry up and check it, will you? Bill, the door is stuck. Well, I don't see how it can be. Well, it is. She's bringing reinforcements. Hello? Well? Stuck! Hang on, Harrigan! What's the matter with you? Let you me do it. it. What are you two doing in there? Playing hide and seek? We're trying to make a very important business call. And we'd like a little privacy. Well, all right. Well, why don't you help me carry the cokes back to the office? Okay. Okay. I'll help you. Hello, Harrigan. Hello. Harrigan. Harrigan! I'm sorry, your party has been disconnected. We'll get him back again. Well, that takes care of everything. Uh, Miss Grant, would you show the folks out? I got them in. I guess I can get them out. I'm glad you like the plans, Mr. Richmond. Yeah. Well, goodbye, Mr. Richmond. I'm glad to see this is an outfit that gets things done. I hope so, Judge. Goodbye, Mr. Richmond. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Richmond. Goodbye, Councilman. Goodbye, Mr. Richmond. Goodbye. Listen, if Harrigan said he'd take the bet off our hands, what's holding Gleason up? I hope it's only an accident. Did he take the bet? He wanted it, but was post time and too late. Well, hurry up. Get the call. As soon as I figure the odds against getting caught, I'm going to strangle that dame. Quiet, quiet. Let me have it. 
They're away. Round a far turn. It's Prince Hal, Warsong, and Tumbleweed. Into the stretch. It's Prince Hal, Warsong, and Tumbleweed. And coming up fast on the outside is Flywell. It's Prince Hal, Warsong, and Flywell. We still got a chance. Flywell may break a leg. It war song and fly well. War song and fly well. He's going to have to break two legs. And the winner. Fly well by a nose. Oh, my back. Oh, my aching back. It's broke in 50,000 places. Everything's going along just fine. They were very impressed with all that activity around here. Oh, and Mr. Reed is going to have the city council alter the restrictions. And they're going to give us an extra five feet of ground in the front. Make it six feet and I'll crawl into it. Don't mind him. We uh, just had a big disappointment on that Belmont deal. Oh, well, I'm glad I had nothing to do with that deal. Oh. I'll get it, Miss Grant. Hello, Mrs. Donato. You're getting psychic, Dick. Nice race, wasn't it? Yeah, great performance. How many rehearsals did it take? Don't let it make you bitter, Dick. Why don't you take me to dinner? We might be able to pick up where we left off $50,000 ago. I'll pick you up at eight. What are we going to do about the $50,000? I'm going to take her to dinner. That's enough. I'll have to eat. Miss Grant, uh, call the Riviera Club. Uh, reserve a table for two at nine o'clock. Yes, sir. So I turned to the judge and I said, Your Honor, I think you've made a mistake. I think you've forgotten all about Section 5863 of the Criminal Code. <laughs> you can imagine what kind of a spot that put him in, can't you? Can't you? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. You're not even listening. Well, I don't know as I blame you. After all, I've done nothing except talk about myself all night. All right, I'll uh, talk about you. You look especially beautiful tonight, Ellen. Yes, it's a dress. I always liked it. It's my favorite. It's brand new. Well, uh, what I mean is it's my favorite now. Thank you. Did you wear it just for me? Hmm? I said, did you wear it just for me? Oh, yes, yes. Good evening. Table for two, Richmond. Right this way, Mr. Richmond. Champagne cocktail. Just like old times, eh, Dickie? Not exactly. Close enough for a starter. Too bad about the race. Don't ruin your mascara over it. I'll have that 50,000 for you if you don't mind waiting. You know I'm patient. That's good because it's going to take about six months. I can't afford to be that patient. It's going to take that long to get it together. I don't know any horses that can do tricks for me. I may be able to let you have a couple of weeks. After that, I'll turn it over to my collection agency. See what you mean. However, I might be able to forget the whole thing. That is, if you react to this the way that I do. Oh, Mr. Richmond. Oh, hello, Miss Grant. Winton. Imagine meeting you here. What a coincidence. Mr. Winton, Miss Grant, uh, Mrs. Donato. How do you do? We've met. Well, you certainly look different tonight. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'd hardly recognize you without that typewriter in your lap. Oh, I'd know your lap anywhere, Mrs. Donato. I uh, understand you're doing big things down at the office, Richmond. We're just trying to make both ends meet. And succeeding, no doubt. Yeah, well, good night. Good See night. you in the morning. Oh, I may be a little late in the morning. I have to deposit those checks in the bank, you know. Checks? The down payments, they're just pouring in. You're so efficient, Miss Grant. Must entail a lot of night work. Oh, I don't mind if Mr. Richmond doesn't. Good night. Good night. 
I think you need a new secretary, Dickie boy. I'm afraid I'm going to have to keep her, Peg. That is, if you want your money back in a couple of weeks. But, Dick, you ain't got a chance of raising 50 G's in a couple of weeks. We're not going to build those houses for nothing. Build those houses? Sure, why not? There'd be a lot of dough passing through our hands. Down payments, bank loans. It won't take long to cream 50 grand off the top. Sure, we'll share the cream with you. Every visitor's day. From past experience, I know that's embezzlement. Dick, you can't get away with that much dough. With Lightning taking care of the books. Oh, the books, the books will be fine. But you'll have to build a couple of houses just to make it look real. And I left my erector set at home. Besides, we ain't got much time. But if we get somebody else to handle it first, they'll get wise. And all we have to do is find someone who never gets wise. And the first place to look is in our own organization. Well, the point is, Miss Grant, the housing project is off. Not again. I'm sorry, but our time is going to be completely involved with some operations in Florida. Oh, but Mr. Richmond, those people are counting on it. I realize that. Of course, if we had someone we could trust, uh, we could turn the whole thing over to them, couldn't we? An operation like this needs a head. Someone with brains, initiative, energy, leadership. And also, someone that those home buyers would have faith in. And I just don't know of anyone to fit that bill. Do you, Miss Grant? How about me? You, Miss Grant? You said yourself that Mr. Willicombe would take care of the actual building and, and Mr. Kilcoin the books. Oh, I know I could do it. I'm sure I could, Mr. Richmond. Please, just give me a chance. Yes. Yes, it is. Well, I'll uh, talk it over with my partners. All right. The way she'll file up that project, we won't need any phony books. Call her back. Just a minute, just a minute. This is supposed to be an important decision regarding a big operation. Operation Alcatraz. Well, here we are. 
There's yours, Jeannie, and that's yours, Ruth, back there, and this is Helen. Isn't it exciting? Oh, I can't wait till it's finished. Home, sweet home. Come here, Ruthie. I didn't think it would be so small. Oh, just look small. When the walls get up, you'd be surprised. This is a bedroom. It's a bedroom? Uh-huh. I couldn't begin to get all my things in here. You couldn't? I thought it'd be much larger than this. Well, how big did you want it? Well, let me see. My kitchen is awfully small, Ellen. Ellen, my bathroom's so tiny. Charlie won't like that a bit. Well, it's a good thing you came over before the foundations are in. Then it would have been too late. How big do you want the bedroom? Well, about out to, uh... About out to here. Okay, stay right there. We got plenty of string. Hold on to that. Right here? Yeah. How's that? Oh, that's fine. Is that all you have to do? Sure, they put the foundations in wherever the string is. But I'll ask Mr. Willicom in the morning just to make sure. How big you want your bathroom? Isn't it wonderful? You can design your own house. We're lucky if the houses were already up, we couldn't change our minds. Change them any way you like. Our motto is going to be, we aim to please the wife. But there must be some mistake. You can say that again. Hi, how's it going? It isn't. I don't know what can be wrong. Well, come on, I'll show you. I can't figure it out. Well, you've got some figuring to figure out. This is one of the screwiest jobs I ever had. You're in for a big headache. I don't know what could be wrong. In all my experience, I've never seen anything like this. I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. I give up. What are we building? I wish I knew. Of course, you're the architect. You can do whatever you want. Like having the living room with a Smith house overlapping the Larkin bathroom. I sure hope they're all good friends because Mr. Larkin will be shaving in Mr. Meyer's living room. And the Meyer's kitchen, that's disappeared completely. But they can probably cook in their bedroom. It's big enough. It blocks the whole street. Clever idea. Drive in bedroom. This is absurd. Why didn't you follow my plans? Your men laid out the lines. We followed them. Oh, hello, Mr. Richmond. How am I doing? Looks like you're running true to form, Miss Grant. Thank you. Mr. Willicombe, I want to talk to you about some change. Oh. I should have known. Miss Grant, you didn't move those lines. Those little strings? Well, yes, but I was going to get your okay. I didn't expect the cement to be poured so fast. Fast and hard, Miss Grant. Well, you got to get some men and tear this out. That's three days' work. I can't spare any men. I haven't got enough as it is. I'll do it. It's my mistake. I'll tear it out. You just show me how. Well, you can start gnawing on it with your teeth, Miss Grant. Exactly 50 lengths. Who's going to tell this girl she was just playing house? She'll find out. But you got to send us the lumber. I got 60 carpenters sitting here doing nothing but waiting for it. Next week? That's what you told me last week. Can't you... Hello? Hello? Mr. Roscoe Johnson's bought up every brick and piece of lumber in town. It's just spite. Sure, he always makes it tough on competition. What are we going to do with our carpenters? Let them go. And the bricklayers? Let them go. Okay, but you won't be able to get them back when you want them. Then let them stay. You can't pay them when they're not working, Ellen. Then let them go. Please, make up your mind. I can't. Uh, Miss Grant, what about these rear units? What about them? We've got to level off the incline. Well, level it off. We can't level off the incline without a retaining wall. Well, buy 
want one. Miss Grant, you don't buy retaining walls. We build them with cement. Oh, I know. We got no cement. We're loaded with cement. We just don't have any mixers. Johnson's got them all over on his apartment house job. Look, if we have cement and no mixers, carpenters but no lumber, why don't we let the carpenters mix the cement? Miss Grant, I wouldn't suggest that. Hello. Speaking. What? I'll call you back. That was the bank. We're overdrawn. Overdrawn? We'll just have to stop work. But we can't stop work. Ellen, the men have to be paid. But you said we'd have the framework up with the money we had. I expected to. I can't understand it myself. It doesn't seem possible we could have spent that much. We did have some bad breaks, delays in materials, Johnson. But I figured on things like that in my estimate. You just didn't figure on me in your estimate. I figured on everything. I can't be that far off. There must be something wrong with the books. Let's go over to the office and check them. All right, I'll change my clothes. I'll wait outside. Well, the books balance all right. What'll we do? I don't know. The banks won't advance another penny till those frameworks are up. What's going on, Miss Grant? We were just going over the books. Oh, I uh, saw the lights. I wondered. Anything wrong? Not with the books. With the project. We've run out of money. Well, the way things were going, I figured that would happen. But all those people, they've got their life savings tied up in those homes. Perhaps you can get them to put up some more money. They haven't got any more money. Yeah, it's a tough break. Isn't there anything you can do about it? I wish there were. I better take you home. We'll drop you off while I come. Fine. Sorry, Mr. Richmond. I kind of let you down, too. Oh, don't worry about me. I guess I just wasn't cut out to be an executive. I'm glad. We tried to do a good thing, and it just didn't work out. It's going to be tough breaking the news to all those people, but we'll just have to face it. Doesn't sound nearly so tough when you say we. You'd better get some sleep. Good night. Good night. Isn't that dame out there? Of course not. She only works here. Well, go see what the commotion is. Say, listen, uh, get this money to Peggy, will you? I promised it to her today. Oh, no. This is your deal. You handle it. What is it? Is lynching legal in this state? You mean we ain't popular here anymore? I ain't kidding. We better get out there like we. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Better to face him. I, uh, I know how you people must feel, but uh, there's nothing that can be done. You can give us our money back. Yeah. Wait a minute. The money's all been spent. What? Excuse me, please. Let me in here with you, please. Look out, folks. Let the judge through. For your information, Mr. Richmond, I'm a lawyer. And let me tell you, I'm going to do my best to see that you and your crooked friends are put in jail. That's too much. Stop it. Oh. Wait a minute. Stop it, please. You're blaming the wrong person. It isn't Mr. Richmond's fault. It's mine, every bit of it. He didn't even want to go on with the project, but I begged him to. And I begged him to put me in charge. I thought I could help my friends, but the mess I've made of everything, I guess I did nothing but hurt them. We couldn't help some of the things that happened, but any mistakes that were made were made by me. Shifting the blame's not going to get our houses built or get our money back. We relied on you, Ellen, and you too. He's right, Ellen. I'm well aware of that. And Mrs. Grant and I have decided to put our home up for sale. That will at least pay back part of your losses. You see, when I mess things up, I mess them up for everybody. Well, that's not what I <laughs> Well, I guess I'll get back to court.
If you'll excuse me, I'm going out and buy a good drunk. Drink or drunk? Drunk. I'll buy a good drunk with you. I thought we were going to take the blame. I couldn't let you get involved, Dick. You're just starting in this town. We have to think of the future. We do, don't we, Dick? Yeah. Relax, Dick. You wear yourself out. I suppose I'd be nervous, too, if I were about to part with $50,000. You are about to part with it, aren't you? Yeah. You never were one to crawl on a deal, Dick. Peggy, you, uh said you'd forget about this dough if I were willing to come back into your organization. Does that offer still hold? Of course, I wouldn't be able to come in with you right now. I have some business to finish, but as soon as it's washed up... How does this affect little Miss Busy Fingers? You can forget about her. But can you? There's nothing to forget. Good. You and I are alike, Dick. I never crawl out on a deal either. Nine, fifty thousand. Okay, Miss G, go to work. I won't take it. You won't take it? What's wrong with it? Dick, I just know you didn't get this money easily. And even if I were to manage things better, with the work lagging and Johnson purposely tying up all the material in town, well, I just think you're throwing good money after bad, that's all. Johnson's doing that, huh? Well, I guess all's fair in love and business. How do you like that? He's stuck in the bricks against it. That's as bad as fixing a horse with it. We've dealt with situations like this before, and I think it'll be a pleasure to deal with another one. Come on. You too, Miss Grant. Well, it's your move. Do you think it'll work? If you remember your lines. Johnson? Well, well. The low-cost housing expert. Mr. Johnson, I'd like to talk to you. Well, that doesn't cost anything. There's your gimmick. Here, use this. But, Mr. Johnson, you couldn't possibly use all the materials you bought up. Perhaps. But I'd rather let the termites take over than sell to you. charge here. I am. Well, you'll pay for this. This is criminal negligence. Oh, now, now, it's just an accident. Oh. Accident, nothing. I saw it happen. I'm the only one that did. Uh, give me a hand. I'll take him to the dock. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm going to take him to a hospital. I'll help you, mister. Oh. Thanks. Oh. Oh. All right, back to work, man. Back to work. You'll be all right. Don't worry, Mr. Johnson. I happen to have seen it, too. 
It was an accident, wasn't it? Well, now, I was standing right at that window telling you about the things that I needed, the lumber and the brick and the plumbing supplies. Uh, never mind that. that. There wasn't any criminal negligence, was there? Well, if I were to testify to that, it would be his word against the word of Judge Grant's niece. Oh, I believe you in a minute. And you will tell him there was no negligence, won't you? Well, now, let me see. After I told you what I needed, you said, um... Just what was it you said, Mr. Johnson? Miss Grant. What? If you think you can blackmail me... Say, I wonder who that poor man was. What a judge's niece will do. You think the work is still lagging? Lagging? I don't understand it. I never saw him work this hard in a job before. It's no longer a job, it's a race. A race? What do you mean? Look, when you get a worker to put 20 bucks in a pool, just try to hold him back. Yes, this is Dick Richmond's. Twenty across from who? Jingle Bells? Oh, there's no one here by that name. You must have the wrong number. Yes. You'd like to put fifty dollars on Blue Meadow? Well, that doesn't seem like very much for a whole meadow, but I'll tell Mr. Richmond. Oh. A bet. Yes. Yes, I certainly do understand. All right, how much do you want to bet? Yeah, I got it. Any messages, Miss Grant? Sam wants 20 across on Mumbly Peg in the 5th at Belmont. Sam's a bad picker. I'd get along great with him. I'm sorry, Ellen. What for? Everything worked out, didn't it? You wanted someone with brains, initiative, energy, leadership. I was just right for the job. Why, until a minute ago, I thought Mumbly Peg was a kid's game. What are you going to do? Call a DA? No. Why not? Because of what it would do to my uncle. Judge Grant being taken in by a bookie. Well, you don't have to worry about the bookie part of it anymore. I'm leaving town. Where are you going? Florida. But why? I won't tell anyone about your business. I'm going with Peggy Donato. Peggy. That's right. We're opening up a new office down there. Then everything you said to me, that was all part of the front. Like the real estate business. Not exactly. I was playing out of my league. I made a mistake, so I'm getting out of it. I see. I've got some business down at the bank. Goodbye, Mr. Richmond. It's been a great experience knowing you. When you pick your next secretary, give her my regards. Hey, what's the rush? Miss Grant finally got to answer the inside bones. Is she going to spell to the law? Doesn't want to embarrass her uncle. Thing called loyalty. You feel all right? 
Sure, I just breathed six furlongs. Now, look, Miss Grant, don't get Dick wrong. He kicked this whole thing over in a minute for you. Even Gleason and me is thinking about going legit. Real estate, oi. A little hustle, and it makes bookmaking look like playing penny ante. And it's legal. Look, Miss Grant, Dick is leveling with you. When he got jammed up with Peggy Donato and her crowd. I know all about that. Horses, Peggy, Florida, everything. Well, it ain't as if he was going willingly. Getting you out of that housing jam put him in hot to her for 50 G's. Is that how he got the money? He owed it to her. On account of that flywell message you forgot to give him. Yeah, this is the only way he could pay off without getting the business. The business? Yeah, strong arm stuff. That's the only business Peggy and the boys know. Always pays her off. Well, looks like I went to the wrong business school. Might as well have one for the road. I thought you were in a hurry to get to Florida. Have to wait for the boys the west side take. Jim! Louie! Finger! Muscling in on my organization, huh? Hijacking my key man. You're in a jam, sister. Listen, Ellen, I made a deal. Shut up, you rat! So you tried to shake me for this tomato, huh? What is this? You said she was only a front. Just a front. So that's the pitch. Please, Ellen, you'll only get hurt at this. Are you trying to threaten me? Look, sister, you're leaving here without this lug or you ain't leaving at all. Now, what's it gonna be? I paid 50 grand for him. Okay, boys. Reason with her. Wait a minute. That stuff went out years ago. Well, I'm bringing it back. Ellen, for heaven's sake. Okay, boys, what are we waiting for? No, no, don't shoot. That's not the way to settle things. We'll have every cop in town after us. After all, he's not the only key man in the business. There are lots of good operators. I thought you'd come around. They always do when the chips are down. Ellen, you haven't got any chips. I'll get to you later. And if you ever try to cross me again, you're going to wind Ellen. up with a lead girdle. Light me up, Gimp. The rod, bright eyes. Thanks, Ellen. I, I was trying to tell you it's no good. Throw him out! Hello, everybody. What's the beef? No beef. Mr. Richmond and I are just settling our accounts. Oh, that. That's been taken care of. Mr. Richmond is all clear on your books, Mrs. Donato. He's what? Sure. Lightning here picked a ten to one shot and we put five G's on his nose. That's $50,000. Five G's? You? I don't believe it. Sure, it was your book we hit. Hey, Siggy. That's right, Peg. How would you crumbs have paid off if you'd lost? Crumbs? Now, Peg, we didn't question you when you hit us. It's the same thing. The boys thought you'd appreciate our throwing a little business your way. And you know the ethics of our business, Peg. Yeah. My rod, please. Charming tomato. Let's get out of this place. Oh, my dignity. I do it to get out of my can. how'd you know that horse would win? Oh, any Einstein could have figured it out. Besides, a guy told me the race was in the bag. So, I say, Gleason, put five on number four in the sixth. Number four in the sixth? But I bet on number six in the fourth. We won, but it was on Katie Girl. Not Prince Hal? Prince Hal ran dead last. Ah. <sighs> Oh, uh, give him air. Uh, give him air. Be all right. Prince Hal. Oh. Yeah.